in our discussion. I am from Atomgram town, which name Enerhadar. That means a town which give energy. So I take my life in the nuclear and uh, then nuclear security. Uh, new problems of the Chernobyl zone. On the night uh, of April 26, 1986, the largest man-made disaster on the planet occurred a symbol of a man-made hell that a human is able to arrange for himself. As a result of the explosion at the fourth power unit of the power plant, about 400 times more radioactive substance were released into the environment than during the explosion of the little boy atomic bomb that destroyed Hiroshima. Estimates of the number of victims of the tragedy vary greatly. According to UN official figures, only about 50 people died as a direct the result of the accident and another 4,000 died from health problem caused by radiation. However, there are other studies proving that hundreds of thousands of people became victims of the radioactive release. And in the two decades after the accident, the explosion at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant directly or indirectly claimed up to 200,000 lives. What is happening in the Chernobyl today? In the first days after the Chernobyl accident, the greatest danger to the population was radioactive Yodin-131 with a half-life of eight days. Then in the first decades after Chernobyl, cesium-137 and strontium-90 became the biggest threats of, to public health. Their half-life is uh, 30 years. That is, half of these radionuclides have already uh, ceased to be dangerous. In the next 30 years, another half of the remaining volume will decay, and so on. For the complete decay of radioactive cesium and strontium, 10 periods of 30 years each are needed. That is three centuries, not weak, however. New enemy. In addition to uranium fragments, radioactive cesium and strontium, nuclei of the so-called transuranic elements were formed in the reactor. Basically, this is plutonium-238, 239, 240, and 241. The first three of these isotopes have alpha radiation. In terms of its impact in, on living, living organism, it is 10 times more dangerous than beta and gamma radiation. Plutonium-241 has beta radiation. However, during decay, it turns into americium-241 with dangerous alpha radiation. It is known that during the Chernobyl accident, plutonium-241, with a half-life of 14 years, fell out the most. And if during the first 14 years there was no americium, then with the beginning of the half-life of plutonium-241, it appeared as experts not, not only in the 30-kilometer zone, but also outside it, sometimes very far from the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. 35 years have passed, since the accident, and most of the plutonium-241 has already turned into americium-241. It remains to decay about 20% of the isotope, according the, to scientists, the peak of his creation, and therefore the greatest danger will be in 2056. In this uh, slide, you can see the map of the level of distribution of americium on the territory of the Chernobyl zone. Uh, the half-life of americium-241 is uh, 433 years. That is, at least 8 to 10 such periods must pass for this isotope to cease to be dangerous. And this is uh, for 1,330 years. However, even after that, not all territories will become clean. In the reserve remains plutonium-239, which, according to experts, has a poly pollinated a 100 kilometer zone around the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. Its half-life is 24,000 years. In this slide, you can see a graphic of time dynamics of americium and plutonium isotopes activity. How will you protect yourself? The penetrating power of alpha radiation is weakly, but on condition that radiation affects the body from the outside. 
You can hide from such irradiation with a sheet of paper, and the paper absorbs alpha radiation. For a human, the role of such paper is played the, by the keratin, keratin, keratinized uh, upper layer of the skin, but there is also internal irradiation if the source of alpha radiation enters the body, with food, for example, and it is already dangerous since the body has nothing to defend against it from within. Americium, like strontium, accumulates in the bones, which means that it is poorly excreted from the body. It is a dangerous radionuclide. Problems with law. Until now, not a single country has not only laws, but even legislative initiatives regarding accounting and its exact permissible norms in nature, as well as in food. But uh, most importantly, safe norms for humans are unknown, but they should be about the same as for other isotopes with alpha radiation. Americium is, uh, the, is not the only problem. On the territory of the Chernobyl zone, the implementation of the E-40 waterway has begun. Waterway E-40 is a planet navigable waterway, the purpose of which is to connect the Baltic and Black Seas. The length is about 2,000 kilometers. According to the project, the route runs from Poland through Belarus along the bed of the Pripyat River and uh, to the city of Kherson in the Ukraine. The Dnieper and Pripyat rivers should become part of the E-40 waterway. At the same time, the drainage basin of the Dnieper is completely polluted after the accident at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in 1986 and Pripyat crosses are the occlusion zone and pass it directly next to the nuclear power plant. In this photo, you can see Pripyat River and Chernobyl power plant, and it is really close to each other. After the 1986 accident, a large number of isotopes settled on the bottom of the Pripyat and over time became covered with a layer of silt, which made the river relatively safe. To ensure the passage of large vessels along the Pripyat, it is necessary to carry out a number of dredging forks, which in turn will lead to the fact that radioactive silt will go downstream, which in turn will lead to radioactive contamination of the Dnieper and the Black Seas. So what to do? There are several ways to prevent or at least reduce the possible consequences. During the liquidation of the consequences of the 1986 accident, uh, peculiar traps for silt were dug at the bottom of the river. They were underwater pits in which silt was collected, which was then covered with underwater sediments. To some extent, this helps to localize pollution and prevent it from spreading completely. The second method is much more radical and costly. The idea is not to touch the radioactive zones of Pripyat, but to build a navigable canal next to the river. There is a reach of experience in such work in the world, for example, the Vellon Canal in the Canada. However, this method is very expensive. So, conclusion. Since the 1986 accident, the Chernobyl zone has become cleaner than 35 years ago. But today, the many and new problems arise associated with the consequences of that catastrophe. Not only Ukraine, but the entire world community will think about their solution. And someday people will be able to use Chernobyl territories again. Thanks for attention. You can uh, ask your question. Thank you, Yaroslav. Um, that was fantastic. Uh, yeah, does anybody have any questions for Yaroslav at this moment? Yes, uh, my name is Katerina Pavlova, and uh, I would like to express myself uh, regarding your, uh, um, your knowledge uh, about Chernobyl, uh, Yaroslav, and uh, I'm so surprised that uh, you were really aware about uh, all situation, current situation in uh, Ukraine regarding plans for future to use this um, territory. I also want to say that uh, 
I'm very uh, happy to to see my neighbor because I was live uh, and I'm originally from uh, Nikopol city and it's right behind the river behind the um, water uh, saver uh, opposite side from uh, uh, from uh, your side where you live so um, about uh, if what you do what what is your because of course I, I'm also aware about this project and it's very strategical project. But uh, when I was acting head of uh, state agency of Ukraine on exclusion zone management, I was um, I was stopped uh, this uh, not project, but I stopped um, uh, the mining uh, inside in the uh, Pripyat uh, river Pripyat because I really want to see the uh, feasibility study for this project and especially feasibility study uh, for area in exclusion zone because um, it is a really significant issue and uh, we don't know exactly how it will, uh, which impact will have uh, nature because the Pripyat river uh, is going through the uh, biosphere reserve a Chernobyl radiation uh, biosphere door. So, um, how you think uh, it is? Uh, it is really uh, profitable to build this uh, um, to implement this project, or you think we can wait a little bit uh, with this issue? It's not first issue we have in uh, As I said, uh, this uh, very. Uh, will bring uh, very much money to Ukraine and this uh, Poland and Belarus, but uh, this project can carry most much problem for us with uh, radiation problems. So as I said, I think uh, we need uh, to us. Uh, uh, I think we need to set up the really possibility study for this project to understand all economical and technical impact on our system. Because yeah. uh, down, down after the uh, right down after the Pripyat River, we have Dnipro River, uh, which is very important strategical river for Ukraine. We have uh, uh, water in uh, society. Uh, spare water from this river, and if radionuclides will uh, migrate from uh, Pripyat to uh, into the uh, Dnipro river, then we can have really a uh, big problem with uh, drinking water. Yeah, but uh, if we can finish this project, if what uh, this is will be uh, to increase our position in the world community but uh, it is very dangerous yes and also geopolitically we need to find out first of all also uh, which cooperation in this field we will have with the republic of Belarus, because uh, to build this way this uh, strategic project which is very very expensive actually we should understand uh, which kind of cooperation and which plus we will have from this. So this is just my opinion. But thank you so much. It's very, very interesting presentation and uh, very interesting information. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Yaroslav. And I think that's actually a great pivot um, to introduce uh, properly Katarina Pavlova. Um, so just a few words on, on Katarina. Um, who, who just spoke. Uh, she works for the state agency of Ukraine on exclusion zone management as the head of the Department for International Cooperation and Public Relations. I mean, as she mentioned, she also serves as the head of the state agency for the Chernobyl exclusion zone management and is in fact the first woman to hold such a position. Um, she was also appointed chief of staff for combating the Chernobyl fires uh, just this last year. Um, and she coordinates G7 and the uh, IAEA projects related to decommissioning the nuclear reactors and radioactive waste management at Chernobyl. Um, she participates in the G7 working groups against the spread of weapons of mass destruction and physical security, uh, and as a 
uh, in a U.S. Ukrainian working group uh, on export controls. So Katerina obtained her Master of Science uh, diploma in engineering in Denmark in 2011. Uh, in 2018, she completed the course on international security and information analysis policy here at the James Martin Center for Nonproliferation and Export Control. Uh, and in 2019, she studied disarmament and nonproliferation of weapons of mass destruction at the Vienna Center of uh, Disarmament and Nonproliferation. Uh, in 2019, uh, she was nominated by the president of Ukraine to the National Academy for Public Administration uh, and defended her master's degree in 2021. Uh, and since January of 2020, she's been a member of the expert group of the K-1 project at Columbia University uh, in New York City here in the U.S. Um, so Katerina, it's a, it's a great pleasure to have you on and, and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for this uh, uh, words about me and thank you so much also uh, for uh, the young generation is really uh, um, very active in the field of uh, uh, stretching uh, cooperation with Ukraine, with our students, and also stretching um, cooperation in the field of uh, non-proliferation and export control. And of course, this webinar and uh, information sharing about the Chernobyl accident, it's very very important for Ukraine and uh, we do appreciate all your attention on this uh, accident because this is our history and it's not just history of Ukraine. This is world known uh, uh, biggest uh, accident uh, in uh, nuclear sphere. So thank you so much that you, uh, you, you use your time and your, uh, you share your opinion and information and organize such a webinars uh, for students and for young generations. It's very important. Thank you. Absolutely, and, and thank you. Um, so uh, as mentioned in your introduction, you, you do a lot. Um, and I was just wondering if you could speak a little bit to some of the work that um, that you're doing in the Chernobyl exclusion zone. So what, what does that mean um, in terms of, of the work that you do? Uh, first of all, uh, uh, it is uh, it is not just work. It is something uh, you uh, connect forever. Uh, this is part of your life, uh, and uh, it's uh, very uh, sensitive issues we work with. We have uh, a lot, uh, big amount of radioactive waste, and we need manage this waste in the right way uh, regarding all um, all implementations in this sphere. We also have atomic station, which is under the commission and now, and uh, we we also have this territory, huge territory of exclusion zone, two thousand six hundred square kilometers. It's something like one thousand square miles. So it's uh, probably uh, quite big, like Luxembourg territory, and we need somehow to use with uh, best result. And unfortunately, or maybe it's also good that we cannot have best practice in this field because uh, uh, this is a unique territory now. Uh, what we do, and we not, I cannot say I'm doing because uh, you, ca you cannot do alone anything in exclusion zone or something with Chernobyl. It is big team, big, big professional team. Uh, we have also big support from international partners, from donors, because to, uh, to work and to manage all these issues and problems and exclusion zone, we do uh, need help uh, also financial and technical, and uh, uh, we need help from our international partners because budget of Ukraine cannot cover all, uh, all, power, all problems of uh, our exclusion zone. We need to build special infrastructure for radioactive waste, and um, I also want to mention that our agency uh, responsible not just for exclusion zone, responsible for all radioactive waste management all over Ukraine. We have uh, six enterprises all over Ukraine uh, in different regions, uh, which is collect radioactive waste in, uh, uh, in place and uh, 
after we uh, we have some special procedure to uh, to relocate this uh, radioactive waste inside an exclusion zone uh, we also um, best result i think uh, we have uh, it is um, uh, in the sphere to save the nature which is renew itself in 35 years it is really a unique territory we have so many animals flora fauna and it is uh, like piece of paradise. And that's why decision was taken in 2016 by degree of president to save this nature and create uh, a Chernobyl biosphere reserve, radiation biosphere reserve. Uh, so uh, we can say the 10 kilometer zone is inside a uh, nearby reactor, nearby uh, Chernobyl nuclear power plant, uh, 10 kilometer zone is a uh, zone territory for special industrial use, uh, where is uh, located all facilities for radioactive waste management and uh, Chernobyl and PP and 30 kilometer zones. This is Biosphere Reserve. Uh, it is 80% uh, of all territory of exclusion zone. And uh, uh, we, we hope that this is piece of uh, paradise. Uh, it, it will be like pleasant for our future generation to see what this nature can do itself without impact of human, you know, because it's an um, anthropogenic impact, it's almost zero, it's no people there. So that's why animals, it's uh, it just came from all over Ukraine, from Belarus, we have animals, they just came to this territory because they live themselves, no one touches them, and uh, uh, it, is, uh, it is some present for our uh, future generation. So um, probably I just can advise, of course, it's uh, all the time better one time to see than hundred times to hear. So that's why uh, we do hope that soon or later we will have uh, uh, some organized with this pandemic and uh, uh, we will have all again open uh, visitors line to see uh, uh, exclusion zone. So I invite everyone to see to come and to uh, enjoy uh, to enjoy this um, territory together with us and uh, to have more and more conversation and opinion exchange about it thank you so much and yeah that conversation is something that's essential um, and part of the reason why we're here today so with that i, I want to open it up to questions uh for all of you guys i see uh, Noah, you have your hand raised. So, do do you have a question? Introduce yourself, Noah, and you're muted. You're still on mute. My God, I swear I would never be the person who forgot to unmute his or herself. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Noah. I am a research associate at the BNS Center for Disarmament and Nonproliferation. Um, also, I am a graduate from. Uh, Miss from Middlebury, so uh, happy to see that this uh, telebridge is still uh, going on. I have um, a question for both Yaroslav and also for uh, Katerina. For, for Yaroslav, um, you, you outlined two different approaches, both the, um, the um, what's the term? Um, the thing to collect dirt, basically, uh, the first approach, um, as well as the, the digging of the canal. I was wondering, if money was not uh, a problem, if money was not a question, which of the two would you select and why? Um, because you know, more money doesn't always mean better, right? Um, and for Katsirina, I was I was wondering in, about the the zone in general, the exclusion zone. If you faced issues with um, people who had who had been evacuated, whose families had been evacuated, trying to return against their better uh, against what would have been better advice, um, and if so, how, what you've done about that. Um, and just because I know Margarita is too humble to brag about herself, uh, I encourage all of you to go to the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists website and read the article that she had published the other day about, about the exclusion zone. It's really um, a really great read. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah, that, that's, that's my piece. can try answer for your question. 
Uh, I think uh, our politics have very much problems with corruption. So uh, if uh, they can not take money in his bag, so <laughs> they will do it. So if uh, uh, they can uh, not spend money for a additional kernel, kernel so they will not spend it uh, take for himself. Uh, I can also add that uh, Yaroslav is uh, really, uh, uh, he's 100% right about the corruption. When we say, uh, when we look forward to implement something, we should make a risk assessment, and especially in this field, in corruption field, because um, we can see best picture and some best presentation and have good plan how to implement this project. But we cannot account and we cannot be sure that in some stage of implementation of the project, we will not face some, um, some uh, hazard and some uh, treats from uh, people who is uh, seeking the mind about money. So that's why Yaroslav is right in this uh, also. This is also, uh, this is also what I want to mention. Of course, this E40 is very perspective and very wonderful project, but uh, I won't be sure that uh, this is project will be uh, safe and secure for our Ukraine and for actually for all the world, because uh, uh, we, we, we cannot joke with radiation. And I also sometimes say that uh, there is very similar radiation and the uh, corruption. You cannot see, it's very heavy to, to detect, but it uh, spread very fast and it is, uh, it is danger and it kills. So um, we should all the time uh, make risk assessment about uh, corruption in the field of implementation of projects. Yes, and uh, I, I can continue with uh, with the next uh, question about uh, um, about people who were moving out and uh, evacuated from um, from Pripyat from Chernobyl. Um, unfortunately, we don't have statistic about these people. It's for in the former SSSR uh, time, and uh, we cannot uh, make exactly numbers and exactly map where they are and how it is. Uh, situation is that we have some part that came back to uh, exclusion zone, and uh, it was some people who just came and lived in. Uh, uh, villages in, uh, in exclusion zone, and we actually create in, in one of our in, uh, enterprise, uh, we create department who is to care about these people because we cannot, it, it is actually uh, not allowed to live in exclusion zone, but we also don't have law how to move them out. It's their houses and it's probably it's mostly it's old people who don't want to move to another country or somewhere, they just came and uh, lived and so, uh, we have special de department who take care about these people. And uh, from every year, we have less and less this, uh, we call them Samasol. Uh, uh, it's like uh, in, uh, in uh, English, it's like uh, uh, self, uh, self, um, uh, yeah, self-placed. So they self-decide and they safe uh, self-placed in this uh, territory. Uh, but uh, we have uh, so many organizations all over Ukraine, uh, which is connect uh, all people together who were evacuated, who were uh, temporary uh, evacuated from exclusion zone. We have also organization 
of Pripyat Chan. It's from uh, Pripyat city people. They connect uh, with each other and they uh, actually um, make some activities to uh, save this history and to uh, make this family uh, live uh, in, in time by time. So um, about article of Margarita, it is very impressive. I, I read it and uh, it is really, really actually a, a actual situation and it's like uh, all words is true. So um, yes, there is issues with, uh, uh, with uh, tourists. I, I like to say visitors. I don't like say tourism in, in exclusion zone, believe me. It is, I think, a mistake. So visitors, and uh, my opinion, it should be visitors, mostly connection and the uh, implementation of relationship in this uh, space. It should be visitors in uh, uh, special sphere who is uh, really a need to come and see the consequences of the accident, the consequences of human mistake, and so on. Of course, HBO movie, it's um, very high, highlights uh, uh, tourism in Ukraine, and we got so many tourists uh, during the time of uh, uh, video of this uh, HBO, and then um, after it, uh, big interest is grow. But also, it should be safe, safe for, for tourists and safe for uh, our national uh, security. So uh, we do need work more uh, about this procedure. And I do hope that in the near future, uh, we, can, uh, we can have some plan, which it will be very comfortable and acceptable for uh, IEA, for international donors, for people from nuclear sphere, and also for tourists, for visitors, for uh, other side of uh, population. So we need uh, we need balance this um, this uh, sphere, and uh, we 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 should find out the middle uh, middle which is uh, will uh, accept the and the, uh, nuclear society and public society. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, and just as a technical note to remind everybody, so we're recording today's session um, and we'll be publishing it on our website in case anybody wants to come back uh, to see it for reference. Um, also, definitely uh, encourage all of the students to ask some questions. Hannah, I see your hand is raised. Um, yeah, do you have a question? Yes, and um, hello everyone. I'm glad to see you all here. And thank you for the great presentation, Yaslav, and also thank you, Katerina and Margarita and everyone who are organizing this uh, great event, because it's really important to share information about Chernobyl exclusion zone, and especially these days. As just a, a small example, uh, when I was applying to uh, our university, uh, my background is uh, nuclear power plant engineering. My grandmother, she was really afraid of it. And oh my gosh, where are you going? What are you going to do there? It's so dangerous. So people really afraid of it. And I have a question, she got a question uh, to Katerina. Uh, you mentioned uh, at your previous comment about visitors and uh, just some kind of my opinion, uh, visitors are really important and not only some specialists, but also people who don't know anything about this. They have to come, but this should be some authorized way for them to come there. And my question is regarding to some unauthorized people like stalkers who just try to come to the exclusion zone and try to find something what they should not take away from the zone, but anyway, they do this. Uh, how do you track these people or do you have some way to, uh, to count numbers of people who try to access zone? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Hannah, for this words and for, uh, for highlight this uh, uh, issues and this question with stalkers. Of course, we have this stalker. We have game, very interesting game, popular game, and we have stalkers. We cannot, we cannot uh, do that we don't have it. We cannot act anyway that we don't have stalk. We have. So my opinion, we should have dialogue with stalkers. What is stalker? 
they want to go to territory which is forbidden for free, free access. And also, maybe people don't have money. It's also possible because all visitors should pay money. So maybe it's problem with money. Okay, then we should stay and have dialogue with them. We should found some uh, platform where we can make discussion and we should hear also them. It's also our population. They also part of society. So they even have their own Telegram channel. They, uh, it is, we cannot just throw it out and close our eyes. We have these uh, people. So in my opinion, um, government and state agency should have some platform, some way to, uh, to sit together in some kind of table and to, to start dialogue, to explain, to make some program to explain how it's danger and to make some program to make some, for example, I don't know, I, I can say that it's exactly can be like I say, but my opinion, it can be some ticket of stalker. Yes, yeah, that he can one time per half year have free visit to exclusion zone, yeah, by two. So it can be like this because sometimes it's problem with money. No, not everyone have 800, 1,000, 200 grivna to visit exclusion zone. Be honest, yeah, but they want so. That's why I think it is big idea, a good idea to have dialogue, and uh, of course it's also should be some law. But we have this law; it exists this law, and we know uh, uh, cases when some stalkers are caged by police, and after they just write some explanation and they go free again. So it's not to work. We need dialogue in all problem issues, work, just dialogue and discussion, so. Absolutely agree. Thank you a lot for your answer. Uh, Timothy, I, I see your hand. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I have a proposal. Uh, in my previous years, before the pandemic, I uh, usually took my student to the museum of the day of museum in the world when uh, the all museums are opened uh, and you can visit them in free. So maybe it will be interesting for the Katerina to organize such a day when everybody who wish to visit uh, the Chernobyl zone can visit it for free. In the, in the same day like uh, museums. Thank you. Um, and it is a fantastic idea. And I'm curious for, for any of the students, do you have any questions uh, or, or comments about, you know, anything that, that was said today or, or, um, in Chernobyl in general? We're, we're also very much interested in, and curious in your perspectives as well. Uh, okay, let me uh, ask uh, Katerina. I uh, want to ask you about, uh, we have uh, something like plan, building, restore, or uh, create a traveling path uh, or tracker for visitors, uh, or this is uh, just word, right, uh, is this time? And and sorry for everybody who's asking a question. Would you mind introducing yourself? I'm sorry. Uh, I'm a student uh, from QPI, uh, Nazar Kakinos. Thank you, Nazar. I think this question will be to Katerina, but I see she's left. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, she had to go. You know, she she's speaking at another UN event actually, which will take place uh, at nine o'clock, and I would be happy to share that link. Hopefully, it will work better. Uh, but she had to. She told me she had to leave. I my my apologies. So maybe I don't know if somebody else wants to address that question. 
Oh, we have some other people. We have uh, some people who work at the uh, agency uh, on the exclusion zone management. I don't see, or oh, she may have left. Uh, there was Margarita Rayats. Uh, yeah, she, she had to go as well. Uh, okay, all right. So maybe somebody else could take this question because it's a great question. Mm -hmm. However, we see this later because we uh, our our group uh, planned uh, visit to this zone. So we'll see, and maybe we talk about that. Yeah, it's a very good question, and I um, I wish we um, knew how to address it. But <laughs> so, uh, are there any other questions? Uh, sorry, I, I jumped in. Yeah, I have questions for my uh, American friends. So how in America uh, think about Chernobyl disaster? Did, did uh, they know about this catastrophe or not? I think there's maybe two of us on here. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I can give a, a quick um, description of that. It, it's, a, it's a fantastic question. And I actually have a, a similar one for you guys. Um, I think a lot from the American perspective, it, it depends on which generation you're asking. So for people who were um, you know, alive in 1986, I think will be a lot different than Americans uh, who you know, were born in, in my generation, for instance. Um, and I think there's not overall, not as much uh, knowledge or information about Chernobyl other than a vague idea of a nuclear meltdown. Uh, that, that tends to be what it is in the, in the American conscious, unless you know, you're talking to specialized individuals. I think we mentioned the HBO series, uh, once that came out, I think that raised uh, it in the in the American imagination a lot more uh, over the last couple of years. But yeah, I would say it's something that's a, a little bit vague in the American psyche. I'm happy to weigh in as, as well, um, if, if that would be useful. Uh, uh, Julius has pointed out the generational gap, and I think that's a fair consideration. The other the other gap that you should think about when not, not just Americans, but how people outside of the uh, post-Soviet space in Ukraine in particular view this crisis is uh, the institu institutional gap, meaning that um, if you're talking to someone who works in our field, you probably have a really good idea of what Chernobyl meant for the nuclear industry, meaning um, a, a much larger emphasis on nuclear safety um, you probably have an idea of what is really dangerous and what is not so dangerous. Um, you probably have an idea of why what happened happened and, and all that stuff. And so, you know, for people working in the nuclear industry, both from a policy and technical point of view, you probably have a fairly good idea, you know, a fairly good understanding of Chernobyl. Um, if you're just some person who works as a mechanic or an engineer you know, whatever, um, not in the nuclear field, you're probably scared of nuclear. Um, you know, there's not a hot, outside of programs like CNS and, um, you know, a few others, there's not a lot of education uh, that I received um, uh, about what nuclear energy is and the difference between nuclear power and nuclear weapons and so on and so forth. Um, and so that that's a real gap that, um, that, that we need, we as a world community need to, uh, to look at closing um, to get the most out of nuclear energy and, um, you know, with non-proliferation goals in, in tow. Um, that's just my, my thought. I guess I, uh, as, a, as a naturalized American citizen, I, I could say, but I lived through Chernobyl. Well, I did not, I was not in Ukraine, uh, but I was actually in, uh, I'm originally from Kyrgyzstan and uh, Back then, I was already a grown-up, well, young grown-up person, and um, 
we heard about it, you know, uh, being such a remote location, I think it affected us on many levels because not only, you know, of course, the most uh, harm was done to people in Ukraine, Belarus and neighboring uh, territories, but a, a lot of people, uh, you know, so-called liquidators, they were sent uh, to help, you know, clean up. And uh, actually a good colleague from Kazakhstan, I just spoke with him yesterday about his experience. Uh, he was one of the liquidators and he, uh, he, he, we just shared that, you know, that we are doing this, um, uh, I told him that we are doing all these events uh, to commemorate the anniversary. And he said, yes, we need to talk about it because there is a generation gap. And we think of a new generation sometimes thinks about this as a, like a video game, you know, or something that didn't really exist, or like was artificially <laughs> just created in the virtual space. But I think uh, what is really important is that having these conversations. So, um, and um, I think that maybe we should continue doing that dialogue about, uh, we cannot forget the history. Uh, you know, the same comes to the nuclear testing sites, for example, in Kazakhstan, when you have uh, this huge legacy, huge territory, which um, cannot be used uh, for many, 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 many years to come. So, but I think it's really good to hear your perspective uh, today. Uh, so I think some students, if you have some other, please share your views. Uh, what is it for a young Ukrainian to, you know, to live in the country which uh, was the place for the worst humanitarian nuclear disaster? Uh, uh, everyone know about this accident uh, every year uh, in 28th April in the news we have silence minute with this mm -hmm. event so and uh, in history books uh, in everyone history books uh, uh, writing about this disaster so everyone know about Chernobyl and uh, all the generation have uh, bad uh, emotion with uh, power plan Chernobyl but uh, more younger generation uh, have more loyal uh, view in the nuclear power plant so this is our think about this disaster. I also have a comment regarding this last question. Just right today, I saw a comment uh, of my friend at Facebook, and uh, she was born at the same year when Chernobyl catastrophe happened. So uh, she wrote like, just these days we had a conversation with some younger people. And when I mentioned that my age is the same age as uh, the cat catastrophe has happened, uh, young people were amazed, like, oh my gosh, like, we forgot already about this. It has happened so many years ago, but you are still young, you know? So really people who are in this theme, they know a lot, they care a lot, they ask a lot, and they know where to find information. But if we have no commemorable uh, articles or, or some movies or some other information about this, people can easily forget about this. It's an excellent point. Um, and I guess uh, some of you guys touched on this a little bit, but I, I was hoping to flip the question around to my our Ukrainian friends and ask, um, you know, what what you see is that generational gap between how people, um, as you were mentioning, Hannah, who were born in 1986 or, or earlier see it, uh, and then those who you know, we're, we're born later, perhaps in the 2000s, and how that influences, you know, nuclear energy in the public imagination, and, and perhaps even nuclear policy, as it's written in Ukraine, that, that's something that has always been interesting. Well, again, from my own experience, people who work in this field and people who are in connect with people who work in this field, they know something. And if, if you don't know people who work in this field, you don't have almost any information. Just if you are interested, just in this case, you will know something. 
But again, thanks to that we have this commemorable dates and we have a lot of information uh, that people try to share with social media as well. And as for me, I think a lot of information goes right through Facebook, LinkedIn and other uh, platforms. So this can help young generation to reach the information because they mostly don't watch TV or they don't read some newspapers. They live in social networks. So this is maybe one of the best ways to share this information and just to fill this gap. Thank you. In my point of view, this, no, uh, younger generation have more loyal view because uh, they didn't know how uh, when this disaster in 1986, so they have more good view on two nuclear power plant, but they already know about this disaster uh, had been in 1986. I have comments about this. Uh, our younger generation don't uh, listen history. History uh, about this horrible uh, situation, uh, catastrophic uh, uh, history who tell us uh, of history uh, I uh, listen. Uh, this history uh, uh, tell me, oh, oh, not like this, uh, with a second. Uh, uh, the liquidator. I uh, talk about uh, this history, about this catastrophic uh, with liquidator. Uh, she is uh, tell me about uh, all this uh, horrible uh, for things uh, who happened, uh, uh, who sh happened with uh, her and her family. This is uh, really horrible and uh, scary. Uh, panic. Uh, 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 and uh, quickly, quicker, quicker, uh, he must quicker, quicker, uh, and move, uh, uh, take, uh, take up uh, her children, her, uh, uh, her, her document, uh, and uh, move another, wo or another uh, town without uh, any explanations without uh, prepare and this is uh, really disaster it's really horrible but younger uh, generation don't interesting about this she, she, uh, uh, they not don't uh, uh, talk about this they don't uh, listen uh, more uh, older generation is that all thank you Nazar um, and yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if anybody else has any closing comments, uh, but I, I'm going to have to jump for my next class. But I, I just wanted to thank you all uh, for taking the time and for sharing your perspectives as well. Um, it was incredibly enlightening. So I, I really appreciate it.